fast Volvo. Autotempest.com, Volvo V70, actually no, I want a manual, C30, ooh, that one, how do I do this? <gasps> That's a nice butt, five cylinders, stick shift, lovely, start her up. Ooh. Yeah, I don't have any audio to sync. I'm just giving myself a tiny applause before I start for encouragement. This is a 2011 Volvo C30 T5 R design. It's red, it's Swedish, although it was made in Belgium. It has a six-speed manual transmission. It has a 2.5-liter turbocharged five-cylinder engine, and it is extremely, extraordinarily fast. Okay, that's a lie. It can be described as a bit nippy, but not much more than that. Not that that's such a bad thing. My last car, a Fiesta ST, could also be described as a bit nippy and not much more, and it was heaps of fun. And this little red hatch here makes more power than it did. 30 more horsepower, in fact. It also weighs 500 pounds more, but ignore that for now. Actually, you know what? I'm getting ahead of myself. Volvo produced the C30 from 2006 to 2013, with a facelift happening in 2010, although in the US they only sold them from 2008 to 2013. Quick note on Volvo's nomenclature, the C in C30 stands for coupe or cabriolet, S is sedan or saloon, V is versatile, XC is cross country, and Volvo is Latin for I roll. Throughout its lifespan, the C30 was offered with a staggering 13 different gas and diesel engine options. They even made an electric only version at one point that rather hilariously had a four gallon gas tank on board just for the heater, because you know, Sweden's a cold place. Okay, technically it was a bioethanol here, but it's the same concept. In the US, we weren't allowed to have the electric only version or 12 of the 13 different engine options. The only engine offered in the C30 in the United States was the T5, the 2.5 liter five cylinder turbocharged engine. And you could have that engine with either a five speed automatic or a six speed manual, depending on your preference and the capability of your left foot. The C30 wasn't all that popular in the US. United States C30 sales accounted for just over 10% of global C30 sales. As a result, this is a sponsorship segue, C30s can be a bit hard to find in the United States. Thankfully, I was able to find this glorious C30 using Auto Tempest. Auto Tempest. Auto Tempest is a search aggregator. Search for the car of your choice, in this case, a Vlavo C3PO. Auto Tempest. Add any options you like. In my case, I added a manual transmission. I wanted the facelift model, so I made the minimum year 2011, and I wanted an R design. So in the options, I added R design or R, just in case anyone mislabeled it. Auto Tempest. Hit search and you have results from several different websites, including, but not limited to, eBay, Carvana, and cars in bids. All the cars, one search. My lovely little Swedish fish here happened to be listed on Craigslist, which I found using Auto Tempest. Auto Tempest! Find your next car, or you know, just casually browse, on autotempest.com. And thanks to Auto Tempest for sponsoring this video. Auto Tempest. And yes, you absolutely can look for Trabants on Auto Tempest. Just don't expect to find many for sale. This specific C-3PO, or whatever it's called, as it says right here on this badge, is an R design, which is short for Robert Design. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. According to Wikipedia, the R in R design stands for refined, but I could find no corroborating sources to back that up, so I'm going to assume it's not true. R design is just a sporty appearance package. With it, you get this wing, these wheels, these seats, several badges like this one on the steering wheel here to remind you of its R designedness, blue gauges, and some other stuff that I couldn't be bothered to mention. All the changes are cosmetic. There's a reason they call it R design and not just R. Personally, I think all the changes that the R design makes, especially the wing and the wheels, absolutely make the car. Without them, well, it's just a silly little hatchback that a sparkling vampire drove in Twilight. The T5 engine in this car, seen here covered in black plastic, makes 227 horsepower and 236 pound-feet of torque. That's about this much. It's front-wheel drive. It has a small-ish Borg Warner KO4 turbo. 
down here somewhere to ram air into the engine. The intake manifold is surprisingly made of plastic and it, like a lot of five cylinder engines, makes an utterly delightful sound. It's just too bad you can't hear the engine in here. I mean, listen to this. That's 4,000 revs. It's just too quiet. Now, from a comfort point of view, it's a nice feature, but from a childish fun point of view, it's a bit of a detriment. Also, it doesn't particularly mesh well with having a manual transmission. There's not much of an auditory reminder to upshift. I've more than once happily been cruising on the highway in fourth gear because I've been listening to music or I had the air conditioner on or anything else to drown out any little bit of sound, and I don't have any auditory reminder to upshift. Hey, I'm on the inside now. This is a relatively small-ish hatchback, but there's a surprisingly large amount of room back here. Unfortunately, the load lip is rather high just because of the design of the car, but there's a fairly good amount of room back here. But if you need more room, both rear seats fold down nearly flat. You might look at this car from the outside and think the rear seats must be tiny, but actually, they're relatively spacious. I can fit back here just fine, and the only thing I'm lacking a little bit is headroom, and we've taken many trips with a child and the dog in the back without issue. Now, if you have more than two children or dogs, you might want to look elsewhere. I hear the XC90 is nice. Speaking of two children and dogs, I just found an open bag of apple slices in the back of this car that is very, very moldy. Both front seats in the C30 are fully power adjustable, heated, have adjustable lumbar support, and three different memory positions. And if you need to get into the back seat, the front seats fold forward and out of the way with the greatest of ease. And the rear seats are two distinct bucket seats. None of this pretending three people can sit in the back malarkey. The Fiesta had a bench seat in the back, but the only way you could get three people back there is if the third person was steamrolled first. Volvo called the C30 a premium hatchback, and really, that's not a bad way of describing it. It's certainly no Mercedes S-Class, but it's no Mitsubishi Mirage either. For instance, it has rain-sensing wipers. Although this one doesn't, because the rain sensor's missing for some reason. It has cruise control, traction control that you can't turn off, Bluetooth calling, automatic climate control, a sunroof, the single most cavernous glove box I have ever seen. Oh, and I'm not done yet. Not that that's really a feature, it's just interesting. A waterfall floating center console thing. And a pretty good level of sound insulation. It has fog lights front and rear for that extra bit of Euro flare. And safety, I guess. Although in America, if you drive around with your rear fog lights on, 80% of the people around you are going to think you've got a brake light stuck on. It has headlights that, like on all Volvos, are designed to stay on all the time. And naturally, because it's a Volvo, the crash test scores are fantastic, with airbags surrounding your entire being to cushion everything from your head to your ego. Oh yeah, and I can't forget headlight washers. The key is, and I don't mean the key to success, I mean the key to the car, is this little plastic chunk right here. And as you can see, by the lack of metal anything, it's entirely chip-based. Unfortunately, even though this key is entirely chip-based, you still have to physically pull it out of your pocket and insert it into the ignition every time you want to start the car. That is, unless you have one of these little plastic fingers here. This inserts into the ignition hole and essentially turns it into a knob. With that in there, you can leave your key fob in your pocket at all times unless you're about to do laundry. And in case you were wondering, yes, the locking and unlocking of the doors is also proximity-based. Lock, unlock. The interior, while it is made of nice materials and it is pleasantly squeak and rattle-free, is sort of bland. The dash is large and pretty featureless. It's soft touch, but you don't grope your dash when you're driving down the road. The door panels are so-so. The waterfall floating center console thing is interesting, but it's not quite interesting enough. I mean, yes, it's floating, but it's still just a gray slab with some buttons on it and a full phone dialing pad for some reason. Overall, the interior is just meh, but it's important to remember that this interior was designed in the early 2000s for the Volvo S40. So it's not bad when you consider this design is almost 20 years old. As it tells you every time you turn on the entertainment system, this car is equipped with Volvo high performance sound. And there's a little monochrome C30 for you. The entertainment system on this car consists of a CD player, an auxiliary input, and something called a radio? I'm not sure what it is exactly. I think it's what they used before Spotify. 
sounds strange. And although this card does have Bluetooth calling, it does not have Bluetooth audio streaming, hence this little hockey puck we've got stuck on the dash right here. And the climate controls are automatic and perfectly logical. I don't really have anything to add about them. And the seat heater controls are down here. I didn't exactly know where to fit this in, but I had to point this out. The headlights could not be easy to remove. The only way they could be easy to remove is if they fell out on their own. The headlights are held in by this little wedge right here. Pull it out and the entire headlight assembly just pops right out. That's it. Some serious thought went into making that as simple as possible. Anyway, um, transition? On the road, the C30 is a somewhat subdued hot hatch. Kind of like a puppy, but on sedatives. Yes, it is torquey, and it is quick. In fact, it has almost exactly the same zero to 60 time as the Fiesta ST that I owned previously, and you can fly through the gears and hoon about and generally have fun in it, but it's more comfortable and less eager feeling than what I think of as a typical hot hatchback. There's a cop up there. Let's get over. The Fiesta, for example, and yes, I know I keep bringing it up, had fantastic tight and communicative steering. It had the wonderful trait of being able to kick the back end out whenever you wanted, which was a lot of fun. And in general, it always felt excited and ready to go. This, on the other hand, doesn't quite have that same vibe. The steering in this is a bit lazier, less communicative. The rear suspension is fully independent, like a grown-up car, so it's more comfortable and more understeer. You'd have to try really hard to kick the back end out in this thing. And the engine is too quiet, and it feels more torque-based than rev-happy. In fact, it barely feels turbocharged at all. There's no drama to the speed, there's no lag or any noise to speak of. It just has a little bit more power than a naturally aspirated engine. And these characteristics, combined with the fairly high levels of sound insulation in the car, give it a feeling like it could get up and run, but it'd rather just sit down, you know? It can go fast, but it doesn't encourage that sort of behavior. If it wasn't obvious, I preferred the driving experience that my Fiesta ST gave me over this. Not that I don't like this C30, I absolutely love this thing, it's just a slightly different driving experience. The Fiesta ST was always fun and exciting and ready to go. This one is less exciting, but as a trade-off is more comfortable and vastly better on long road trips. The Fiesta on the highway was a little bit louder and always felt a little bit twitchy, which again was fun, but over time could be a bit tiring. And this has a better sounding engine. Well, potentially. Right now, it's too quiet. It has better sounding engine potential. The engine in the Fiesta could never be made to sound good, only louder. And that's it. Thank you for watching, and thank you to my patrons for your continued support. Now, as I mentioned a couple times in this video, as is, I find the C30 a wee bit dull and needing a little bit of excitement enhancement, which means modifications. Now, how far I go with these modifications will depend largely on budget, at the time that I start the modification process. At minimum, I would like to add some sound enhancements to this engine, because that's really where these five-cylinder engines shine, is with sound. Which means bigger, freer-flowing, nicer-sounding exhaust, probably a turbo blow-off valve because I'm a child, and some way to increase the volume of the intake sound, or maybe just pipe it into the cabin. I'd like to hear the intake sound because it sounds fantastic if you can hear it. You ever heard of Lamborghini Gallardo? Well, that sounds like half of that, which sounds like a bad thing, but no, it sounds great. And at maximum, the ultimate goal for modifications is a big turbo kit. There's a company in Colorado called Elevate Performance, and they make a big turbo kit specifically for this car and this engine. And that swaps out the K4 turbo that's on here for a K16 turbo, like the kind that's found on the second gen Focus RS. The Focus RS made about 345 horsepower, but this, since this kit is from a tuning company, the power output from their kit is over 400 horsepower, and it puts out that power supposedly reliably. But, like I said, that's the ultimate goal because that kit is expensive. So we'll have to see how far I'm able to get. In any case, thank you again for watching, and join me again for a video in the future.